this is Baruch here at the Tiglin Elevator Kolel, and I wanted to give you a drawing or show you a drawing uh, that could help us be able to understand the concept of Gubala, which is called Oivi. Because there's two different ways that we can understand the devolution or the development of Partsufin. One is in, in the way which is called Orech. So Orech would be from the top to the bottom. Let me see if I can get a little bit more light on it. Maybe see it a little bit better. Okay. So he says, here we have a concept here. The, the words starting from right to left, right, are Nefesh, Ruach, Neshama, Chaya, and Yechida. Now these are the names of lights. So it refers to the lights that are coming from the Ein Sof Baruch Hu and the different levels of light. So the highest level of light is going to be the light of Yechida. But if we looked at Yechida, it was possible to be able to look at Yechida then we will understand within it that it has five parts Sufi. Those are the parts Sufi, which is called the Gar or Eric Anpeth. Then there's Abba and Ima, that makes, that makes three. And then there's Zohar and Nuk down at the bottom surrounding them. So they all surround each other, and this is what we call Orech, lengthwise, to be able to look at this. But at the same time, there's another concept which we had, which the Rav had mentioned in the last year, which is called Oivi. Oivi means that actually all the parts Sufim look exactly the same, but we could make the parts of Eric Anpin into five parts Sufim as well. Looking at it from, it should be maybe from right to left, but it doesn't really matter. Right now, the highest parts Sufim, parts of would be in the most inside part. That's the parts of, of Yechida, of the light of Yechida, which is the parts of, of Eric Anpin. Now, the parts of Eric Anpin has its own Eric Anpin, Abba, Be'ima, and Zun, five parts Sufim. Then you move to the right in this drawing, a little bit to the right, and you see that you have the next parts of which are the parts of, of a lesser light, which is a very powerful light also, which is called the light of Chaya. So the light of Chaya also has the same five parts of it, Eric Anpin, uh, Eric Anpin, Abba Ve'ima, and Zohar Venok. Then you go to the next one, and there's a concept, the next level of light is called the Neshama. So the Neshama would be Eric Anpin, Abba Ve'ima, Venok again. All of them look exactly the same, going through Ruach and going through Nefesh. What's the difference between Oivi and Oirech? Well, there really is no difference except that the fact is, is that they both exist at the same time. It's just like you have this parts of Abba Ve'ima, say, for example, wrapping over the shoulders of, of uh, Eric Anpin, and then Zun wrapping over the Nai of Eric Anpin. You have that in every single parts of but at the same time, this part of wraps this one, and this one wraps this one, and this one wraps this one, and this one wraps this one, and they all wrap each other. The reflections of each other and the processes that are taking place within them are the same. But they're different parts of them, and what's the biggest difference is that the level of light that's within them has changed. And so, therefore, the lower level of light always wraps the upper level of light. So you have five different levels that are wrapping each other. Every parts of looks the same way. They have all the different five different. Every parts of has a Naranthi. Every parts of has uh, uh, an Eric Anpin, an Abba Ve'ima, and a Zohar Benok. So I wanted to get you, give you that idea just so you can be able to see this. And if you have a chance to be able to study it, you could look at it a little bit more in depth. Now, this was part of the shear that we've been giving here on Yom Kippur. And that's what we wanted to understand about the five different kinds of Inuyim. Let me see if I get this light down a little bit so it's not so glary. The five different kinds of Inuyim that take place. And if it specifically started talking about eating and drinking, but I'm not sure exactly where he's going. And I'm going to go backwards a little bit so that I can pick it up for myself. He says, Amnam ha'ochelus ha'achila v'ashtia heim ha'heim. So was a nimshach minachitzonius ima ilo. So we had learned that concept from the outside of ima ilo, which is inside of Zeranbet. Is that that's where the the physical eating and drinking takes place. Now, what is he talking about? Let's go over to number hey uh, and see if I can figure it out. So we had said that there's a prohibition in in. Uh, on Yom Kippur of eating and drinking, but on the ninth day, you have to eat. 
call Yomos Hashana, so that when we make brachos, these brachos before we eat actually stimulate Zohar Benok into Yichud. So this is rather physical eating. So he says, like, no, he says it's a physical eating. I'm not sure what he means by it, but this is taking place in Olam Etzilus. Because it's understood that all the different aspects of the partsufim. So try, try to remember that this is a different subject. So when we use the word kitsonius, we're talking about something similar to the body. It's really compared to neshama, which is inside. It's something spiritual element. Every once in a while, ever wonder, you know, what is the spark? That makes you breathe. You know, that's your neshama. So when the neshama leaves, you stop breathing. That's the that's what we call not being alive anymore, not the body anyway. So what they receive from the aspects that coming from the outside is schizoni he's talking about. Nikmas Bahina Guftis. So now he says that the, the body which represents their ampin themselves, their ampin and the nook. They re- represent, uh, that's what they represent, that, that's the body. They had this shefa which is coming into them from, from Ima, uh, from the Chitzonius of Ima, and it's, plant, it's planted inside of them and is considered to be eating and drinking. So he goes on and says that. Now let's look a little bit more here up at the top. He says, Avel biyom ikapurim, yesh l'nuk v'dezeh v'shihim v'achol, but on Yom Kippur, for the Nukva Zer Anpin, who is another name for the Nukva Zer Anpin, is also Rochel Imein. Ilu Yisera Bishtei Bechina Shenivoyer. So there's a higher level here of, of uh, a higher level here. He said, of Im Be'inyan Metziyas Ilu Yachila Bishtei. If we're talking about the the elevation of eating and drinking, Ba'atzma, or if you're talking about the place where they come from. Now, I'm not sure that I really understand what he said. So let's come over here to, this is on number Vav. And let's see what he says. He said, No, I'm in the wrong place. Let me get this right. She receives her shefa. Two different levels that are higher than what happens during the daytime. Just say the weekdays. One, she doesn't receive her 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 uh, her shefa like she does in the weekday. It's like a real regular physical eating. Where does this come from? We said before that this is coming to her from the Chitzonius of Ima. But she reads, reads, receives instead a, an, a, an eating and drinking which is pure, purely spirit, spiritual. So he's corresponding this to Gufnis really means the lower level and what comes into it just like the Shama goes into the body. So therefore we have that idea that's the Ruchnis. Mipinimius the Ima. That comes from the Benemius of Ima. So in Yom Kippurim, there's a higher level of Or, which is from the interior of Ima. That happens on Yom Kippur. That's one thing. Also, where these the, this Shefa comes from. Because also the Shefa that they received from the Benemius of Ima. He said, there's a tremendously high level and root of its of, of the where the flow comes from is very high level. The nimshach the Eric Anpen and they actually come on Yom Kippur from the Mochin of Eric Anpen. The Gufishi is boil of Alon, and we're gonna to get to that, but Rikos, Shabiyom Kippur and Mikanda Rabinukba Rabhila Bishira Bhada Shniya the Ima. So he gives he he let me see if he gives it. he said because on Yom Kippur there's a second another kind of of uh, of eating that comes from Ima. 
And then Shechem and Mochad the Eric Anben, I'm shown that come from the Mochad of Eric Anben. So Yom Kippur is a tremendously high level of light because the sustenance that comes into Atzilus at that point is coming from directly from a very high level. Baratam should be Yom Kippur. So let's read this part. Baratam ki ato be Yom Kippur. Kavarn de Nasra Rachel Lagamre. The reason why everything is different now is because Rachel is now free and independent. So she, he says, and she now is once again getting the dinim, that is the Gavuros, from the back of Zer Anpen, through a sweetening process and a perfuming process. The Nimshad of Rabbi Yedek of Zer Anpen, Atzman, they come to her from Zer Anpen himself, Keniska the Echabed Rasha, the Sira, which was which was mentioned previously before in the Drush of the Sira, and the Sira. So now all of the Spheros of of the all of the Gavuros in the Spheros of Zer Anpen are now transferred into the Nukva directly from Zer Anpen. Now, what are we trying to get at here? And let's read over on number Zion here in the uh, Tevekavanas. He said, "V'chatam should be Yom Kippurim Ola Hanukva the Ima Benizayin is Mepinimiyusa." So now, what happens is, is that the Nukva rises up, and now she's getting the light of the Pinimius, which is a higher level of light than the high light of the Chitzonius. Keep the air of Yom Kippurim, and what's the reason for this? He says, because on the day before Yom Kippur, Kavar Nishlam El Hanasira. The Rachel Bakal as a spheral sample, all of her ten spheros are removed. The commotion of the Bukhobin Erebid like Russian Rosh Hashanah, like we have explained above in the Drush and the Rosh Hashanah, the Bakal Yom and the Sarah Sphira Achal, because every day we see that there is a removal of one of the spheros. Like we said, the ten days of repentance ending on, on Yom Kippur. And that means that the Nook is independent of Zerantin. And beyond Rishon the Rosh Hashanah and the Nasser and Sefir B'Sakesi beyond Shein Yachachma etc. Behem Shehemach Behem Shechayom and as the days continue on, a boyim ad ad Shiba Erev Yom Kippur that continues until the the uh, until you get to the to the to the to the day before Yom Kippur. Naasis and the Sefir B'Sefir B'Shod Yisro the Malchus all of them in the end are all are all are all uh, uh, Nasser. Uh, he said they're all removed. And then you see at this point that the Nasira is completed. So he said by Indian and Nasira, he adyadeshim and kapelos and nukva. So the Indian and the Nasira is that the nukva receives as a gavuros for hadinim acharayim to zir anpin the 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 gavur the gavuros and the dinim from the back of zir anpin. And then what he does is, is that he sweetens them and he perfumes them. He changes the ruach into a nice atmosphere and everything is beautiful. We talked about this, but Rosh Hashanah, that's something maybe we didn't get to. I'm not sure. Let's go look at number nine. So here on Yom Kippur, now we're on the day of Yom Kippur. She has, that is, that the Nukva, he said, let me say, Yom Kippur, he, he said, the Nukva, she has to be able to receive the Mituk Adinim, Min Ima Yilo, Atzman, Shalo, Ayyadeh Za'ah, without Za'ah. But we see here that she has to go mamish up to and it's mashma from here that she goes up above Zeranpin. So let's see, that seems to be a problem. And I know that the, that the uh, chef of the bonus talks about that problem. Let me see which one that was. That was number nine. So he said, and now her dinim have been sweetened and perfumed. She has to get more, more sweetening from Ima. For therefore, the, she has to rise up above the position of Zeranpin. So that her, her dinim should become even more sweetened as a result of Ima. 
Now, the Tiv, I was reading, the the Tiv writes in the Shepherd Kabonis that Zeranpen has to go up also because there's no leapfrogging, frogging, because these are all Shepherds all coming the same direction. Now, that has to be understood because the Rab's not saying that. So let's go on a little bit more and let's see what, what else he says. He said, number 10. Bekevin should also sham and nano mis parnasas men ima achida bishnia. Hufni. So now that she's gone up to the level of ima of ima, so he said a nano mis parnasas men ima. So she's gone to the place of ima. Now my understanding is is that all of the parts of him move in tandem. So that as she moves up, she moves to the place where ima was, but ima is not there anymore because ima is now up at the place of Aragonpin. So what does this mean? It means that as you're getting closer and closer to Aragonpin you are getting higher and higher levels of light. So this means that you have a tremendously high level of light at the position where Bina or Ima used to be. That's my thinking. So let's see what he said. The Kevin also sham, and then Ms. Parnassus men Ima Achida Bishtiya, she no longer gets from Ima this eating and and drinking, which is Gufni. He says, in other words, it's a Bechitonius Bechagabatahila, which would come from where? From the body of Ima. But she actually now is in a position where she's getting her sustenance from the place where Ima used to get her sustenance. And she received Uberochetzis and she bathes of uh, the sach of the shoyza cetera, and she does at all of these different aspects she bathes she anoints herself she drinks and she makes yichud v'chein osam ahei devarim achida v'shti etc those five things that we talked about eating and drinking etc and v'shaynin nizbatlo they're now they're no longer there he says he says because they're coming to her from a place which is tremendously high so therefore these places are not physical places that we have a feeling for. We don't have any substance. They're rock besod hevel hayotsim in the pan. The only way we can understand this is the hevel that comes out from the mouth. And the hevel nizonis ate rachel biyomikapurim. And this is the hevel that now on Yom Kippur, rachel that is the nukpas their anpin will receive on Yom Kippur. Now, let me see where we started. Now, I think we started the number Yud, and let's look at number Yud. And number Yud says like this. So then we said she went to the Ima. Now, I'm, I'm saying that my understanding of this is that she goes to the position that Ima originally is in, in relationship to the Ein Tzach But Ima also moves up. So this whole, we have this whole moving. This is a little complicated Indian there, what we've seen in other places. It's actually the Kitsonius of Ima does not move, but the Benemius of Ima moves up. And so all of the parts of the Benemius of all of the parts of are going to be moving up. So what does that leave behind? That leaves the Kitsonius of Ima and the Rishimo, that's the way I understand it, of what was left over from Ima as she left. So let's see what he says. So he repeats that idea. She no longer is receiving this from Echila, which is Gufni. That comes from the Gitsonius of Ima, like all the rest of the days. Then how does this happen? We make brachos. These brachos go up. They bring down, which is my Nukvin. They bring down my Dukhrin. And this comes back down to Asha. That we do this when we make these brachos. Now let's go over here and see some more. So let me just write down the word, go through the words, and we'll try and understand it. She's now fed from the place that Ima herself, in other words, the position close to the, the the position of proximity to the light of the Ains of Baruch, that is the Nukba of, of uh, Zeranpin, that is Rachel, moves to the position where she is now receiving the same shepherd that Ima used to get. Ima's not there anymore. 
but she's in relationship to the light of the ain't so she's two notches up she's past the notch of zeranpin and now she's up at the, at the place of the zera of ima ima more uh, so he now she she makam the rabbi ramesh bechino shal lechila and here she gets the five different levels which are called lechila v'shtiya lechila v'shtiya sif v'chitza and tashas amita shehem amer hamochin the parts of erik anpin which is from the mochin of erik anpin which is where the ima originally got it from she lechila v'shtiya hasheni shall abba v'ima so this is the secondary kind of eating and drinking about but v'ima k'moshiya v'or b'cholon as we're going to get into it more let's see some more. Is it what we call the Shabbos Shal the Nukva on your Mazda and the Chamesh the Varna Machila the Shdi etc. So all of those five things that we said the Anuim and Rosh Hashanah, all of the Shabbos that that uh, the Nukva would receive, or so Gufnis which are coming from the more physical aspects. She mekabal as a Sefer we call the Shabbos Shal the Gitzoni is in Ima and from the whole year long she receives them from the Gitzoni is of Ima. Nez Batlo they become nullified. Ki he ola the ima because she goes up to ima. Mekabelas has a bit of chinas ruchnis and bebedimis ima. She recedes them for the aspect of ruchnis and bebedimis ima. The lechain. So therefore, here we're coming down now to the end of this little piece for today. So he said, the lechain ain't anakta yeholim the yeholim the hamshach as a shepa halacha gemam b'shar yamalzach ashan. She's no longer in the same position. So therefore, the way that she was fed before, in other words, the sustenance, that is the shefa, the ain't of Baruch let's face it. He says that that shefa is no longer coming to her the same way. Uh, that we used to make, we make brach, well, we're still doing this. We make brachas on the chila, the shtia. rock the so he says, let me just translate these words. They're really actually eating and drinking. This is something that's physical. But now she's only receiving the concept of Hebel, the Yotzim, and the Peh, like the breath, like breath. She's getting something like a breath. Because now what's happening now in Yom Kippur or being extended, flow down to her, through dip through two different bechinos. By the fact that we're holding ourselves back from physical eating and drinking, base the feelos, but also the number five comes in again. Just like we have five parts of him, so we have also this number five over here of the five feelos. Sheyesh be Yom Kippurim that we go through Yom Kippurim, but he near Mazim be so the hevel the yotz min and pass. So this is like the breath that comes from the mouth. Kavish yavor lecholon. This is all going to be talked about more. And we begin as a hevel as that the zonis and the nukva be Yom Kippurim. And from this, then the nukva is now going to be going to receive this on Yom Kippur. This is Baruch Fleischman in the Team Coons Elevator Call Up.